Okay, yesterday we left off in the middle of the dinam <coughs> of uh, Natil Siyadam in the morning, Nagal Vasir. We said that before you wash your hands, you should make sure not to tar- touch different parts of the body that you normally are concealed. Not your mouth, not your eyes, not your ears, not your uh, nose, uh, not food, and all those things. Okay. Now, the Pasuk says, we say this in Davening also, V'chol Kravai Hashem Kotri. Davening Mark Baruchi Nafshi. V'chol Kravai Hashem Kotri literally means, all my innards will bless you. From there, the Gemara learns out that before a person davens, they really need to use the facilities to make sure that their body is clean, so to speak, empty, that they can daven properly. Because we'll learn later, if somebody davens and they need to go to the bathroom and they daven Shemun Esrei, a lot of times you have to daven over again. Because if you're davening when you really need to go to the bathroom, the davening is not kosher, and you really have to daven again. Okay, but we'll, when we get there, we'll uh, discuss it more. <clears throat> okay, now there's a certain things also that when you need to wash your hands, <clears throat> look, we learned already about bread, you have to wash your hands. We learned about until the Sudaim Nagavas in the morning, you have to wash your hands. There are certain times you also have to wash your hands. Okay, what are they? If you get up from bed, even if you sleep a half an hour during the day, you need like Shabbos afternoon, you have a nap, you need to wash your hands. If somebody goes out of the bathroom, and I'll explain what that means. If you go out of a bathhouse or a mikvah, you cut your nails, you cut your hair, um, you take off your shoes, you kill a lice, or um, you scratch your hair, you scratch your hair, or you touch any concealed parts of the body. I'll explain all these things in a second. You leave a cemetery, you accompany a dead body four amis uh, six feet in the street. All these things, you need to wash your hands. What do you mean by washing Oh, so question, what does it mean by washing your hands? So some people are careful, they'll wash with a keli, with an actual utensil. Halachically, if you leave the bathroom, you just have to wash your hands, you don't need to use a keli. The custom is, when people cut the nails, cut the hair, or after a funeral or things like that, then they'll wash with the vessel. But just uh, like uh, touching conce- hidden parts of your body, I'll give a few examples of that in a second. So then the minig, again, there are people that use the keli, but allochically you don't need to use the vessel, you need to wash your hands. Just scratch your hair. That's the thinking shower, no? That's going out of the bathhouse. Now, what does this mean? It means like this. Any part of your body which is normally covered, if you touch it, you have to wash your hands. So therefore, if somebody, pardon the expression, somebody picks their nose or sticks their finger into the ear canal, not on the outside, but if you stick it into the canal area, that's a normal part of the body which is concealed, you have to wash your hands. If you touch parts of your body, let's say above the shoulder, um, inside your shirt, I mean all these things, or you tie your shoes, by the way, I said above that. You tie your shoes, then you need to actually wash your hands. Especially, now, if you scratch your head, so if you touch your hair, then you're not touching the scalp. But if you touch, if you scratch your hair where you're touching the scalp, according to Allah, you cannot make a bracha, you cannot continue davening until you wash your hands. You need to wash your hands. Not necessarily with a keli, but you need to wash your hands. Now, there's a very interesting question in today's world context of everything you're saying is during tefillah, not no. like in the middle of work. Or well, yeah, not in the middle of work, but then if you want to eat something, make a bracha, yeah, then you, that one you would wash, yeah, but not always do people always wash their hands. I'm saying, if you, let's say, scratch your hair or whatever, uh, or... Your desk. And That's what I'm saying, but if you're going to make a bracha, then you really need to, or somebody ties their shoes. You can't make a bracha until you actually uh, wash your hands. A lot of times in davening, people bend down, they tie, they tie their shoes. I mean, you need, uh, you need to wash your hands before you continue. Now, in Shkunach it says, by the way, this is very important, for people to go to the mikveh, they should know this din. Because a lot of people don't know it, even from the people that are rabbis don't know what they see. If you go out of a mikveh, that's okay, let's take a mikveh, right? And pico, whatever it is, yeshiva, mikveh. If you walk into the room where people are undressed, just walking into the room demands already washing your hands, even if you don't do anything. 
If you walk into a mikvah, let's I'll give you an example. A lot of times they see like this. People go out of the mikvah to wash their hands by the sink, they remember and the then they remember the towel. They have to put the towel away. So they walk back into the mikvah to put back the towel into the bin. But they have to go, when they leave, they have to wash their hands again because they went into a mikvah. Even if, it, even if you didn't go in, one sec, even if you didn't go into the water, you didn't go do anything. You walked into, now, in the time of Shulchan Aruch, where bathrooms were not like bathrooms today. Bathrooms in the olden times were outhouses. So just walking into a bathroom, just walking, even if you don't use the facility, just walking into the bathroom would demand washing your hands. And therefore, the din would be you couldn't wash your hands in the bathroom. Because the bathroom itself demands to wash the hands. How can you wash your hands in the bathroom? Many poskim write that nowadays our bathrooms are toilets that flush. And the toilets, the bathrooms are clean. So obviously you can't make a brach in the bathroom. Obviously. But many opinions say that nowadays you could wash. Let's say you're in a place and you want to eat bread. And the only place to wash is in the bathroom sink. So according to many opinions, that's most people say this. You're allowed to go into the bathroom, what wash you your hands, and then make the come out and make the bracha. Or ashiyotze, wash your hands in the bathroom, and then the make, make the bracha outside of the bathroom. Okay. But but you have to be careful with this. Paskim, what's second? Paskim, right? Again, I'm excused at being descriptive, but you got talach, you got to know. If you have little kids that don't know how to aim when they make, and you have urine on the toilet seat, that has a din of the olden time bathroom. I mean, this could happen. You know, you have uh, public bathrooms are like that. I mean, whatever it is. So if a per- the bathroom that we're talking about, our bathrooms that are clean, and therefore you could wash your hands in there, and going into the bathroom will not necessarily necessitate a washing of a hand, it's being if the bathroom is clean. But if the bathroom is not so clean, you know what I mean? So then, it, you can't wash it. What? All this dealing is only during the night or during the day too? Day 24-7. What does it mean 24-7? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Even today, if I touch my ear, I have to wash my hand? Not touch your ear. If you put your finger inside the ear, yeah. No, be the, the mako even with the tefillin, it's interesting. So Poskin, one, one sec, I answered you, but one second. When you put on your tefillin here, many Poskin discuss, and there are people, by the way, that after they put on tefillin, they go wash their hands, because when you put on your hand tefillin, you're touching above the elbow. But most people are makele because they say you're doing it for the mitzvah and it's not, uh, so you don't have to wash your hands. But there are people that wash their hands after they put on tefillin because they did touch uh, above the elbow, which is a place which is normally covered. What? So this is an actual thing that happens. I went from Mincha at a kol So you you use their bathroom, you go outside, they have the sign there to say the bracha. Yeah. And then somebody went in, opened the door. Yeah. And there's some of the first urinal is right there. And when they open the door, somebody's at the urinal. But the fact that it's a separate room, you wouldn't have to wash again. It's a separate room, you wouldn't have to wash again. You walk back to the mikveh, but there is nobody in the room. You still (coughs) You still would have to wash your hands. Or if somebody goes, like on the pickle mic, I'm just saying, you go to use the bathroom, so you're walking through the mikveh to use the bathroom, and you have to wash your hands outside the mikvah because just walking into the mikvah would demand washing your hands. So if somebody ties their shoes, and it's interesting, even non-leather shoes, like Tisha B'Av and Yom Kippur, the Boskum discussed, you, always have to, you also have to wash your hands tying your non-leather shoes. And most Boskum say that you have to tie your shoes even by non-leather shoes. Because it's still dirty, it's still uh, the foot, it's still whatever. You would have to do that. Question. Yes. Going back to the airplane uh, bathroom. We, didn't, we, did, we weren't there yet to go back to, I know but we okay. Did some time ago. A while ago we did it, yeah. So the, you have no other choice. You can't wash anywhere. And the bathroom may have a little bit of, on the seat. 
can you wipe that off and throw it in the garbage and then and then wash your hands? In a practical way, if somebody needs to wash their hands on the airplane, they should close the toilet seat. Okay, number one, close the toilet seat. So then at least you don't have, because in an airplane, it doesn't go out of the airplane. It stays in, into the container at the bottom. Huh? It's like an outhouse. It's like an outhouse, except it doesn't smell so much. Yeah, it's better. It doesn't smell. Anyway, it's on the floor also. But again, if you if you clean it, then it's not a problem also. Blowing your nose? Not blowing your nose. Pardon me, picking your nose, because then you put your... If you blow your nose, if you don't touch the nose, inside the, it's in, inside the nose. Okay. What? You have to wash your hands. Not necessarily. Love Davka. It's a place... It's a place where people stand. It's love Davka, only if, even if people are not there, you have to do it. Okay, next thing is about garments. What? Everybody asks about the bathroom. If you use the bathroom, whether it was sat down in there or not, you don't have to use the clean. Halacha says you don't. I learned that you don't need a kli. So some people are machmed to use a keli, but I'll you don't need a keli. Okay, next. The next thing over here is about clothing. Okay, about clothing. You know, Ju- Judaism teda dictates the life of the Jew from the second they wake up until they go to sleep, from the minute they're born until they die. So Torah teaches us how to use the bathroom and how to get dressed and how to do everything. So now we'll learn a little bit the denim of garments. Now, the, ter- the Pasuk says, You have to be humble and modest in the presence of God. Even though a guy will say, nobody's in the room, so, uh, you know, big deal. So the, the Shechonar says, the Gemara says, God is all over. So God is in the room. and he- So therefore, when a person gets dressed, they should try to be as modest as possible, not only in the clothing they wear, when they're getting dressed, you're undressed. You just don't walk around the house naked because nobody's home. Uh, but God is there, and a person should be humble in, in, in the presence of Hashem. Okay, next. You're not allowed to wear... There's a very interesting thing about... You're not allowed to... There's a passing in Chumash, You're not allowed to go on the ways of Goyim. Which means, the Ramam explains it to me, you can't follow their traditions, their customs... Uh, and all these types of things. So, therefore, you have to be careful. You shouldn't wear garments which are designated for Goyim to wear. In other words, there are certain styles. In, in fact, the Ramam says an interesting thing. The Ramam writes in, in the dinam of not wearing shatnas, even though we know it's a chayk, it's completely illogical. But the Rambam is Sefer HaMitzvah, it's not in the big book. In Sefer HaMitzvah, the Rambam writes, the reason why you're not allowed to wear shot is because that's what the Goyesha priests used to wear. He said, the Goyesha priests, the Rambam says in Sefer HaMitzvah, that the Goyesha priests used to wear shot so Hashem says don't wear shot In other words, if it's a garment which is designated exclusively for, for Goyim, and we'll explain as we get along, so then you wouldn't be allowed to wear it. Uh, for instance, there was a time, it was called Arkas of the Misana. There was a time the Goyim had a special color shoelace. It's a special color shoelace. And, and the trader says, he was red usually, but <coughs> if a Jew wears that color because he wants to be like the Goyim, then he's transgressing Chukusayim Leisalechu. He's transgressing the din of not to follow in the ways of Goyim because he's dressing like them. Okay, to be continued.